Welcome everybody to the Play Legit Podcast. This is KJ and right out of the bat we're talking about Batman Arkham Knight getting that M rating. What I would expect from that the reason is the way that these criminals are handling their business. Probably within the cutscenes. Something Two-Face probably does to some civilians or maybe something the Scarecrow puts people through. It was just a little too dark to get that teen rating. Now, I wouldn't expect the moves on Batman's end to get any more brutal. I think that they will stay on a teen level because, listen, he's not killing folks. That's not how he gets down. But again, I think it got pushed over the edge due to the violent nature of his criminals. Kind of reminds me of Bionic Commando back in the day. That got a harder rating than it normally would have. The whole game is, you know, pretty friendly for anyone to pick up. But if you remember, if you remember that one cutscene where the guy's head is exploding and his blood and gore, that's what kicked it over the edge. So I'm thinking that this game probably had something of that level. Well, of course, magnified due to the modern technology. I look forward to Batman Arkham Knight. June 2nd, 2015 cannot come soon enough. I want to talk to you about very deeply about Sega. I love Sega. This company f brought me a lot of joy as a child. But I'm seeing a pattern. And the only pattern I'm really seeing is Sonic. Yakuza. But we don't even get all the Yakuza all the time. Japan gets hooked up. It's not right to me. And anytime they establish a great franchise, what they're really good at doing, guys, they're really good at establishing a brand new IP. Now, what they do with it from that point on, that's up in the air. But bringing new things out, they're really good at it. Sonic, the first few Sonics. I mean, what else can I say about that? Classics. They even released that Sonic prototype game. A stage from Sonic Extreme was released, the prototype level, just recently. So check that out. Let me know what you guys think about that. But there's just so many classics from this company. New classics and old school classics. And they put all their resources they have into Sonic every year. Take a Sonic break. Okay? If you could put out titles to the caliber of Mario or Ratchet and Clank or something like that, then I'd understand, but Sonic games are so hit and miss, why are you wasting everybody's time? Sonic Generations was amazing. Did a great job of bringing the old school and new school together. That's what you should do. What you shouldn't do is Sonic Boom. They just had to make a game tying to that new show. Actually, has anybody seen that show? I have not seen it. I just couldn't get behind the art style. But if it is good, put me on the game. Let me know if Sonic Boom is a good show. But back to the task at hand. I'm seeing stuff like Vector Man. Where's that at? You can't tell me you wouldn't play a new Vector Man? Come on now. An updated Altered Beast. An updated Golden Axe. I don't know what Beast Rider was, but that wasn't Golden Axe. Golden Axe is not a single player adventure game. It is a side scoring beat em up. Take it back to that. Streets of Rage. Where you at with Streets of Rage? Obviously, you know there's an interest because you re-release the originals and put them in 3D on a 3DS. So you know that there's an interest or you wouldn't keep re-releasing it. Some great indie folks grabbed the code from the Streets of Rage games and made their own. They said, hey, if you want something done, do it yourself. So they tried to remake all three Streets of Rage Make it so that you could play as any character in any version of the game that you wanted. Had a big world map of all the stages. They remade the music. They freshened up the visuals. Sega had it pulled. Now Sega, you know they did a good job on it. What I would have done is said, hey, let's hire these guys. Let's sell this game because that Streets of Rage remake, re-release was amazing. Or hey, how about instead of all that, Make a brand new Streets of Rage. I know, right? Let's do that. Let's do a brand new Streets of Rage. Is this company in financial trouble? They are so fixated on putting out a Sonic at any opportunity they can because they know that will sell. Where is the risk taking at? Virtual Fighter 5. That's awesome. I love that game. They don't come out very often. And guess what? They're great. Can we do the same thing with Sonic? But the biggest reason why I think Sega needs to step it up, and I talk about this because I still got mad love for the company. That's the reason why we're having this discussion right now. Because I want to see them do well. I want to see them put out great stuff. 
I want to see a new Crazy Taxi, not a mobile game. I want to see a full, brand new Crazy Taxi. But the ultimate thing I need from them is Shenmue 3. When's the last time Sega has put out a bona fide blockbuster title? I mean, just lengthy campaign, a meaty story you can get into. That wasn't Yakuza. How many Yakuza games are there now? So I'm saying Shenmue 3 is where we need to be. You left the title on a cliffhanger. That game had so many great elements to it. Fun side missions. Just a main character you could care about, man. Come on, y'all. The company is so hit and miss. Hit and miss. Let's bring it back. Put the thought behind these Sonic titles. I'm not saying stop making them because Sonic is the truth. We know that. But put some thought behind these Sonic titles. He deserves better. The people deserve better. And we know what you guys are capable of because I played Sonic Generation, so I know y'all still have what it takes. Hotline Miami was announced on PlayStation platforms for release of March 10th. Man, that is a game, the first one I still play so much. The AI in that title is ridiculous, man. And it's crazy because that title has one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard. Period. I mean, not even just a video game, just I've ever heard. That 80s inspired soundtrack and presentation just works. And the fact that the game looks like an old title, yet it is one of the most violent games you'll play. For real. For real. The second one is so violent, it's actually banned in Australia. So, I mean, it's, they get brutal with their content and stuff. So, I look forward to seeing where they take the series next. It's reported that it's going to be the last game in the series. Like I said, this game, if you haven't played it yet, if you want to challenge, they say games aren't hard anymore. Well, I say play Hotline Miami to that notion. So, I've been playing Dragon Ball Xenoverse. I picked it up. I would expect a review from me next week. Very happy with the story thus far. It's cool reliving the key moments from Dragon Ball Z's history and making sure that they stay intact. I appreciate the customization in the character. All the choices that they give you, your character feels like he belongs right in the Dragon Ball Z world and it's cool to see him interact with famous characters like Goku, Gohan, Krillin, etc. And now for your amiibo update. Miss Throwback has commandeered every single amiibo known to man except for Lucario. We are working on bringing Lucario home. Other than that, we have every single amiibo. And as far as series go from Sega that we could really use, Toe Jam and Earl is trying to make a comeback. Mr. Greg Johnson, one of the original makers of the Toe Jam and Earl concept, Greg Johnson, has launched a Kickstarter and I will provide the link below because you all need to support Toe Jam and Earl back in the groove. They're going for a retro comic style and I quote plenty of funk. So if you like funk, that old school vibe and just awesome things in general, please support the Toe Jam and Earl Kickstarter. We need to bring back titles like this this is just something that Sega should not let die. I could just keep going on and on. Check them out, man. It's pretty cool some of the stuff you can win if you contribute. I'm going for the dog pack. Because the dog pack, you get the hoodie, you get the keychain, you get the coffee mug. So dog, that's the one I'm rolling with when I get paid. <laughs> so, so thanks for tuning in to the Play Legit Podcast. We'll see you back here next week. M-rated Batman. Wow, I would have never thought I would see an M-rated Batman game. I mean, Assault on Arkham, if you saw that animated movie, it got pretty dark. If In fact, if that had been live action, it would have for sure been M. Because there was a lot of death popping off in that. But, I mean, to think that a Batman video game is getting that kind of rating, that means Warner Brothers is completely behind the game. And they're willing to take that risk. I mean, I guess... Taking a risk on Batman isn't really much of a risk. People are going to get it. But maybe will this transition into live action movies? Do you think we could see a Batman mature game one day? Something to think about. I appreciate y'all listening. This is KJ. Play Legit Podcast, man. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Please subscribe. Stay in contact. Stay in the Play Legit Network. Appreciate y'all. Real talk. All that. Ugh. Pimping. Shining. Flossing. Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> I'm out.